In section 5.3, we're going to work on the inverse problem, which is going to be on finding values where we know the cumulative area or the probability. So one of the things that we did in the past is if I say, you know, find the cumulative area that corresponds to z equals 0.44, recall that cumulative area would mean the area to the left. We know how to find that using the normal CDF. It would be uh, lower bound, upper bound, mean standard deviation. And the normal CDF would tell us that that area or probability would be 0 0.6700, which means that 67% of the z-scores would fall below z equals 0 0.44. What we're going to work on now is let's suppose that I told you that 67% of the z-score values fall below some particular z-value. How could we, given that value of 67%, find that it corresponds to z equals 0.44? Well, that's where the inverse normal function is going to help us out. So what the inverse normal function is designed to do is if you know the cumulative area, in other words, given the area to the left of a given z value, we can find the z-score itself by doing inverse normal of three inputs. So be a little bit careful here. In the previous two sections when we were using normal CDF, normal CDF was given the z-score, you could find the area of the probability, and that normal CDF function required four inputs. Now that we're going to be using the inverse normal, it as a function accepts three inputs. And they are in order area, but in particular it must be the cumulative area, meaning the area to the left of the z-score that you're looking for. The next value will be the mean of the distribution and then the standard deviation. Let's look at an example of one of these together. In example one, they say find the z-score that corresponds to a cumulative area of 0 0.0384. Again, hopefully you're kind of getting all into those good habits of trying to draw a sketch. I especially find that in this section, it's really going to come in very handy. So an area to the left, so cumulative area 0 0.0384, that's really not a whole lot of area. So whenever we kind of shade this, we don't want to shade too much. 0 0.0384 should be uh, just a little bit. And what that's going to kind of indicate is that this should be a rather small z-score, meaning one that's going to be to the left of zero. So we should expect a negative z-score out of this. To find that, we want to use our brand new function. This is also under the distribution menu. I'm going to go ahead and hit second vars to bring up the distribution menu. And now this is going to be under um, option three. If we scroll down, it's going to be the inverse normal function. Again, for those of you using the TI-84 or 84 plus, it will actually prompt you for the area, mean, and standard deviation. For those of you using a TI-83, it's going to be up to you to know that you need three inputs into this function. And they go in order from left to right, area, mean, standard deviation. The cumulative area, meaning the area to the left this time, is 0 0.0384. We're dealing with z-scores, so we know that the mean is going to be 0. Standard deviation is going to be 1. Go ahead and hit paste. So this is what we're going to put on our home screen. Go ahead and hit enter. And now we're looking for a z-score value. Typically, we'll round those to two decimal places. So this would round to negative 1.77. So the z-score such that 0 0.0384 of the area lies to the left of it would be negative 1.77. Let's do another one of these. In example two, they say find the z-score that corresponds to a cumulative area of 0.85. So first things first, let's see if we can draw a rough sketch of this. I have my, my bell-shaped curve. We know that we're dealing with a z-score, so the mean should be zero. And we're looking for the z-score that's gonna have a cumulative area or an area to the left of 0.85. Now, if we were just at zero itself, we know that because the total area is one, half of the area lies to the left of zero. So because we need a cumulative area that's going to be 0.85, we need to get more than half of the area, which means that our z-score should be somewhere over here to the right of zero, which means it's going to end up being a positive z-score. 
So I go ahead and shade this. So the cumulative area, this total area to the left is 0.85. And whenever you're looking for a z-score and you have the area, that's when we use this inverse normal function. We're going to go ahead, hit second vars, go down to choice three. It's going to be inverse normal. The cumulative area to the left is the 0.85. It's a z-score, so that means it's standard normal. That's a mean of zero, standard deviation of one. Go ahead and hit enter. And to two decimal places, we would get a z-score of 1.04. So a z-score of 1.04 would be such that the area to the left of it would be the 0.85. Take a look at example three. They say find the z-score that would correspond to the 55th percentile, that's P55. By definition, P55 should be the value such that 55% of the values would lie below it. So here's our z-score. We know it's gonna be a, a z-score, so it's gonna be a distribution with a mean of zero, which would be right here. Because we have more than half of the area, this z has to lie to the right of the mean so that 0.55 would be the cumulative area would lie below it. So let's look for this. We're again gonna use inverse norm. Second, distribution. Inverse norm. The pro pro proportion or the probability that it's gonna be below P55 is gonna be 0.55. That would be the area. Mean of zero, standard deviation of one. Go ahead and hit enter, and we would get the two places that z-score is going to be 0 0.13, 0 0.133. So the z-score corresponding to our 55th percentile is 0.13. Again, one of the things you have to be very careful with whenever you're looking for a z, and later on we'll see, sometimes we'll also look for x values when we have the area or probability, is that in that inverse normal function, the area that we're plugging in must always be the cumulative area, meaning it always has to be the area to the left of a given value. Let's take a look at example four. In example four, they say to find the indicated z-score. So we have some unknown z-score here and they tell us that the area, they're pointing to the right tail area this time, they say that it's 0 0.0233. Well, that's the area to the right. I'm looking for z-score given an area, so we will be using the inverse normal function, but the issue is, of my three inputs, that very first number we're gonna need is not the area to the right, we need the cumulative area, which would be the area to the left, and we can find that using simply the rule of the complement. We know that the total area under the curve is one. So if I take that area under the curve, which is one, and I subtract off and eliminate the area to the right, then what's left over would be the area to the left of that given z value, which is what we need. So how much area is gonna to be to the left of this z? Well, it should be one minus 0 0.0233, which is 0.9767, and that's what we're gonna to have to use in our inverse normal function. We can go second distribution, go down to inverse norm. The cumulative area in this case we just said was 0.9767. It's still a z-score, so that's a mean of zero, standard deviation of one. Go ahead and hit paste. And we should come up with a z-score to two places of 1.99. So if we had a z-score of 1.99, it is true that the area that would be to the right of that z-score would be 0 0.0233, or conversely, we could even say that the area to the left of that z-score would be the 0.9767. But again, either way you work with it, if you're trying to find a z-score or an x-score later on, using that inverse normal function, just always make sure that your first number you're using is the cumulative area, i.e. that area to the left. Let's take a look at example five. Here they want us to find actually now two z-scores. 
we have two unknown z-scores such that the area between the first z-score, which is negative, because it's to the left of the mean, and the mean itself is going to be 0 0.475. And then we want to find the z-score such that the area between the mean and that z-score is 0 0.475. Couple different ways we can approach this one. First of all, because of the symmetry, we only really need to work on finding one of the two z-scores uh, because they'll just be opposites in terms of signs that from the other. So maybe I'll focus on finding this z-score down here. And the thing to keep in mind is that if you want to find this z-score right here, then what I need to know is how much area is going to be to the left of it. Well, I don't have, at least initially, I don't have the area to the left of that z-score, but what I do know is that the area between that z-score and zero is 0.475. What we can use is, if you recall, the fact that the total area to the left of zero and also to the right of zero so happens to be a half or 0.5. So from here all the way down, that area would be 0.5. If I take that area and I subtract off the area in between z and zero, then what would be left over would be the area in that left tail, which would be its cumulative area that we need. So the area to the left of my given z-score is gonna be 0.5 minus 0.475, which would be 0 0.025. And then once I know that cumulative area, now I'm ready to go ahead and use my inverse normal function. It should be second distribution, inverse norm. The cumulative area here we just said was 0 0.025. Mean of zero, standard deviation of one, because this is z-score. Go ahead and hit enter. And to two places I would see that that z-score is gonna be a negative 1.96. So negative 1.96. 96 would be this z-score and then from symmetry automatically you would kind of know that this z-score here is going to end up being the positive 1.96 another way i could also find this particular z-score if i wanted to by using the calculator again if i want this z-score right here then what i would need would need would be the cumulative area the total area to the left of it meaning i would need all of this over here that we can find out pretty easily. From zero all the way down would be a half or 0.5. And then we have the additional 0.475 from here to here. So the total area below this positive z-score is going to be the 0.475 plus 0.5, which would be 0.975 for the cumulative area below this z-score. If I do second distribution, inverse norm, a cumulative area of 0 0.975, comma 0, comma 1 would give me a z-score of a positive 1.96, just as we had suspected. Let's take a look at example 6. They ask us to find the z-score that has 78.5% of the distribution in the area to the right of it. So that's going to be a substantial amount of area to the right of the z-score, 78.5%, which means that this z-score is going to have to be somewhere over here to the left of the mean in order for 0.785 or the majority of that data to be to its right. So I'm looking for this z-score here. If I have the z-score given an area, then we want to use that inverse norm, but I first have to find the cumulative area before doing anything else. If 78.5% lies to the right, then 100 minus that, or 1 minus 0 0.785, which would be 0 0.215, would be the cumulative area to the left of this given z-score. Second distribution, we're going to go to inverse norm. The cumulative area we have is 0.215, mean of zero, standard deviation of one. Go ahead and hit enter. And we would get a z-score of negative 0.79.
negative point seven nine.